It's always hard following Uncle Bob. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is John Lyons. I am the son of Francis Lyons. But more importantly for this occasion, I'm the godson of Pat and Pearl Lyons. And it was remembered today that I was actually born on June 9th, which is the anniversary of their wedding. So anyway, my dad can't be here tonight, so he asked me to speak the following on his behalf. <clears throat> from the Mission Hill on the north to the Missouri River on the south, from the Jim River to the east, to East Yankton to the west, there appears to be an enormous void. The corn and beans and alfalfa seem to droop a little. The cattle and hogs and birds seem to be restless. Behind the row of ancient and storm-scarred cedar trees along the gravel road in front of Pat Lyons Farm, the now vacant barns, silos, hog houses, sheds, and garages seem to quietly speak of the past like old men reminiscing on park benches. In our imagination, the farmyard still faintly echoes with sounds of the teeming activities of the past. Semis hauling livestock to market, noisy tractors and machinery heading for the fields, hired hands shouting and cracking jokes, the hammers of carpenters and their endless construction of new buildings, fuel delivery trucks, salesmen selling their seeds, new equipment and services, trucks and wagons straining with the loads of animals, hay and grain, cattle mooing, dogs barking and pigs grunting. Lively voices from the many happy occupants and visitors in the house and the hissing and crackling of the, cook, of the kitchen cooking utensils. In the silence around the big table on the porch that was the eating place and conversation forum for countless boys and girls and men and women, sharp, e sharp ears can still hear the news of the day, the noonday market prices for livestock and grain, weather forecasts, and who the dates were for the forthcoming high school proms, <coughs> and sometimes whispered discussions of the terrible news about community and family deaths of young men in faraway places during times of war. Memories are still palpable of the joyous times when new babies came, marriages were announced, bountiful crops were harvested, livestock was marketed at profitable prices, hopefully, and rains came at the right time. Even when inevitable bad times occasionally occurred, they were anticipated and endured with composure. All of these things come to our minds on this day as Pat Lyons will no longer be the dominant force in the neighborhood as he has been for the larger part of the past century. <coughs> Pat was a year older and I slept in the same bed in an unheated bedroom for a decade and a half. My dad goes on to say, oh, how I miss sharing his body heat on cold nights when he was occasionally away. Can you imagine the past few weeks? <laughs> As a boy, Pat could have been a poster child for a rural student in our nearby, nearby Willowdale school. His clothes were always neat and spotless. They seemed to be Teflon coated. He was never dirty or wrinkled. His straight hair was always perfectly parted and combed. When he wrote his lessons on the slate chalkboards, the work, especially arithmetic, was always neat and flawless. The pictures of Lincoln and Washington that hung above those blackboards appear to approve of Pat's meticulous schoolwork. I entered high school two years after Pat. Somehow he was two years ahead of me, even though he was only a little more than a year older. He was one of the best looking guys in his class. The girls were always attracted to him. He had popular, fun-loving friends. He was smart. He was highly self-confident, and schoolwork came easily to him. And he allowed me to hang around with him and his pals. This is how I saw Pat at that time. He was my role model. I never told him this. I hope he can now hear me from his eternal place in the next world. Pat was headstrong and did not always obey uh, parental curfews and behave the way our parents wanted him to. 
I owe him gratitude because I learned from him the trigger points for behavior that cause parental disapproval. <laughs> with, uh, with this knowledge, I could better shield my questionable behavior from my parents' vigil vigilant eyes. Probably the greatest shock that Pat gave our parents was a few weeks after high school graduation when, on his own initiative, he joined the Army and spent the next two years in Korea. I continue to admire Pat throughout his entire life. After he married Pearl, the wisest thing he ever did. True. They took up a life of farming during a lengthy, discouraging agricultural recession, but they hung on, learned the business of farming, and from then on rapidly achieved significant success by making smart business decisions, hard work, significantly expanding their farm operations, and gaining a clear understanding of how to manage a large business during re the reality of wi wi widely fluctuating agriculture agricultural business cycles. When I was first informed of Pat's death, I was deeply sad. I lamented about the great void between the Mission Hill, the Missouri and Jim River, and East Yankton. After a couple days of grieving, I realized that there really was no void at all. The apparent void, in reality, continues to be filled and overflowing with Pat's and Pearl's legacy. Six exemplary daughters, 11 vibrant grandchildren, and many great-grandchildren with lots of potential. And my comment is, looking around, I see lots of nieces and nephews that are above average as well. <laughs> uh, and his much-loved car and tractor collection and his still-thriving farmer intact. What a legacy to leave, to leave behind. Pat lived his life according to the unwavering moral and behavioral code defined by our parents and taught by the Catholic religion that he practiced during his long life. Although Pat was not a reader of poetry, as far as we know, I think he could have signed on to the closing statement written by uh, Yeats, an Irish poet, in his poem, Those Dancing Days Are Gone. Here are several lines, slightly modified, that Yeats wrote in his poem about the end of a man's rich and fulfilling life. When a man puts pretense away and has no further need for his walking stick, he can be contented, for he has carried the sun in a golden cup and the moon in a silver bag. Pat, I am honored and blessed to have been your brother for nine long decades. Um, and, I, and I have just a, a short, a very, very short Pat story, which I'd like to tell you about. Um, Ten years ago, I called the farm to give them the news that I was engaged to my wife, Megan. Pearl answered the phone, but I knew Pat was on the other line. When I told them the news, Pat, without missing a beat, said, Well, John, you can't marry Megan. She hasn't been to the farm, and we haven't met her. So I chuckled at first, but he was serious. So a month later, we were at the farm, surrounded by aunts and uncles, cousins, the whole gang, uh, and it worked. <laughs> I now know what Pat was really saying to me. He was saying to me that the farm and all it symbolizes, family, friends, hard work, happiness, sadness, and laughter, the farm was as much a home as the home where I grew up in Rock Island. It was a wonderful experience.